Hi guys, and welcome back to Canada Top to Bottom. Today, we're continuing our series about how to get started in Canada, and we're going to talk you through everything you need to know about driving here. Outside of major city centres, public transport is honestly not great here in Canada, and the vast majority of journeys are done in private vehicles. As such, you'll probably need a vehicle to commute, shop and recreate here, unless you end up living downtown in a city and can walk or bike. Almost all Canadians have at least one car, if not several, and use them on a daily basis. In order to legally drive a car in Canada, you'll need a valid driving license issued by the government of your province or territory. When you arrive in Canada, you'll obviously be driving on the license issued to you by your home country, and that's perfectly legal temporarily but you will need to swap onto a provincial or territorial license within a certain number of days of arriving. Uh, the last time we checked, here in BC, you have to apply for a BC license within 90 days of arriving as a new resident, but it will vary from province to province. Although this doesn't apply to visitors, you can drive on your foreign license for the duration of your visitor visa. Regardless of the exact rules in your province or territory, you'll need to get a new license when you arrive here as a new resident. And it makes sense to do it in the first few weeks, just so that you don't get near the deadline specified by your local government. One option, if you're not going to stay in Canada for multiple years, is to get an International Driving Permit, or IDP, from your home country before arriving here. The International Driving Permit allows you to drive in Canada without having to swap your license over to a local one, but driving on one does make your car insurance more expensive. If you hold an out-of-province license, you can legally insure your vehicle, but the price is higher than if you are a provincial license holder. We'll talk more about insurance later, but our advice would be this. If you're coming to Canada for a year or less, it might be worth just getting an IDP and saving yourself some extra hassle. But if you're planning on being here for more than a year, get onto a local license. When you do swap over to a local license, the provincial or territorial government websites will tell you what you need to do. We've linked to all 13 of them in the description box below. In some provinces, you'll need to take a test of some sort. In others, such as BC, you simply go to the licensing authority, taking with you your existing license, proof of your Canadian residency, and two forms of photo ID, pay a small fee, and then your new license gets mailed to you. The next topic we need to cover is insurance. It is a legal requirement to have car insurance when driving anywhere in Canada, but the details of who can drive what vehicles will vary from province to province. Like in most countries, the exact nature of what your insurance covers will depend on your broker and how much you're willing to spend, but you must have a minimum of third-party liability insurance, basically insurance which covers any damage you cause to anyone else or their property if you cause an accident. The cost of your insurance will depend on your vehicle, what exact level of cover you want, your age and driving experience, your driving record, your location, and the nature of your vehicle usage. Make sure you fully understand what your policy does and doesn't cover, and shop around a bit for different quotes to make sure you're getting a good deal. We found our insurance broker really easy to deal with, and the whole process has been pretty simple. Just to give you some idea, we have a 2020 Hyundai Tucson SUV and we pay $800 per year for both of us to be insured on it against any third party liability. We paid more than double that when we initially arrived in Canada and weren't on BC licenses, but the cost dropped significantly once we got our new licenses. Next, we're going to talk driving rules. As with so many things vehicle related, the exact driving rules depend on where you are in Canada but one common denominator is that the rules are quite strictly enforced and fines are higher than in most countries. Obeying the rules of the road is a highly recommended thing here, so download a copy of your province's rules and make sure you're familiar with any that differ from your home country. If you're unlucky enough to be in an accident, whether it's a collision with a pedestrian or another vehicle, you need to remain at the scene unless you would be in imminent danger by doing so. Leaving the scene of an accident is a serious offence, so call 911 from the accident location and ask the police to attend, as well as an ambulance if required. You'll then need to swap information with the other driver, including name, address, phone number, license plate numbers, driving license details, insurance company names and insurance policy numbers. 
Speaking of accidents, one thing to bear in mind when discussing driving in Canada is that winter can be pretty severe. It snows in pretty much every part of Canada at some stage every year, and you'll need to know how to drive on snow if you're going to safely get around in winter. Winter tires are not compulsory everywhere in Canada during the colder months, but virtually everyone swaps from summer tires to winter tires as the seasons change, and we'd highly recommend doing so. Driving on summer tires in snowy conditions just isn't safe. So get winter tires, fit them early, and leave them on until early spring is well and truly in bloom. We've got a video, link above, with some tips for driving on snow. So check that out, and if you're still in any doubt about how to safely get around in snowy conditions, consider taking a lesson or two from a local instructor just to learn some basic winter driving skills. The final thing to talk about regarding cars is buying one. You can buy a car either from a private seller or from a licensed dealer, but either way you'll need to register the purchase with your local licensing authority. Here in BC the transfer of vehicles seems to be immensely complicated with new license plates being issued, various taxes being paid by both seller and buyer and insurance issues causing headaches too. Our insurance broker uh, tried explaining it to me, but I just suggested that she deals with the paperwork when we come to buy a new car. We'd recommend getting an expert to help to negotiate the paperwork, and if you buy a car from a dealership, they will be able to provide this. A popular option in Canada is leasing cars, whereby you, as the user, pay a monthly fee for a pre-agreed period of time, usually a few years, and can use the car as your own vehicle until the lease contract expires, at which point you give the car back. Financing vehicles is also popular and involves paying some of the cost of the car up front and then paying the rest of the cost off in monthly instalments. It basically enables you to buy a car which you can't afford to pay for in one go, but it does obviously incur extra costs due to the interest on the monthly payments. Regardless of whether you buy, rent or lease your vehicle, make sure that you get all the paperwork in order by getting a car dealership or insurance agent to help. We've put a link in the description box below to the Canadian Consumer Handbook, which will help you understand your rights. So there you go, how to get your first Canadian in car, insure it and drive it legally. Best of luck and before you hit the road, hit the subscribe button below for a bi-weekly supply of high quality videos about all things Canada. See you next time.